Hey, yo, listen to another show on the Four Odd Radio Network. For more shows, you can go and check out FourOddRadio.com. Have a say. Hey there, Eric here from Socially Awkward Studios, and this 4-Eyed Radio presentation is being proudly brought to you by Raven Designs, illustration and design that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit ravencruise.com. Safe file corrupted. back ladies and gentlemen gamers and gamettes to say file corrupted as always i'm prometheus i am bobby beetle and i am agamemnon giving yeah. you the greatest news here in gaming entertainment oh <laughs> that's a promise that we'll always deliver yeah exactly deliver 100 percent of the time 80 percent of the time every time yeah guaranteed it's not guaranteed. No, no guarantee. <laughs> Read the disclaimers. Yeah, it love... clearly states in the disclaimers. <laughs> you'll love the podcast you're listening to. I guarantee. Do we have it's... fine print on this podcast? Yeah, they have to, it's it's fine audio. Fine audio. <laughs> it's it's only at an octave that dogs can hear, but it's there. Take it's that shit to a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Just listen to the. It's like listening to like an old Pink Floyd album. Like, where's the hidden message? <laughs> you have to play the podcast backwards <laughs> to get the fine print. Uh, so, so what's going on, guys? We got some really good. Some really interesting and some fun news. Full we, got, we got some crunchy nuggets. Full yeah. schedule? They're delicious. Oh, yeah. Full schedule. It's the full ride. <clears throat> we'll let's hop right into To it. the College of Gaming. Let's do so, it. I'm happy. I'm happy and also perplexed. So, in the last episode, we mentioned that Shaq Fu may have a possibility of returning to it's gaming consoles. Yeah. yeah. It's a thing. It's there. Like, Shaq is really Shaq doing Fu it. Shaq Fu 2. He's, yeah. he's trying to raise funds on, raise funds on Indiegogo. Because obviously people that loved Shaq Fu want to throw down more money to play it again. Yeah. But yeah. uh for some reason. Before I hear about Shaq, I mean like he came from uh <laughs> he came from Louisiana State University, mm. from L S U. And uh apparently just like he's very I guess a uh, humanitarian. He's like, like they love him in Louisiana, they have a statue of him at the thing so pr- he just feels like a really goofy guy from what I've seen like on Cribs and stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Seems like he's very likable as a person. Yeah, but I <laughs> yeah. When the heat is on, the pain is gone. <laughs> <laughs> My coffee. Wine well, coffee. But yeah, but his goal is to raise uh, $450,000 for the game. And, uh, you know, you, you get you get DLC for life if you donate $25. Mind you, he's probably covering the rest of, like, the millions or something <laughs> like that with his, one of his paychecks. $55, you get a Shaq Fu t-shirt. Oh, $150. Record your own voiceover. You, um, you get sheet music with a with a Q for two hundred and fifty dollars. So let me see what the what the ultimate grand prize is. Like, do you get to challenge him to game of one on one? Oh, you have <laughs> street hoops. Who wants to embarrass themselves like that? I do. <laughs> That'll show Shaq. He's gonna go all Debo. You won. I lost. <laughs> I lost. Oh, okay. So you can't go one on one with him. Oh no no no. Hold on. For fifteen thousand dollars, you can ball at Shaq's shack. Do so, you know how much ooh. Shaq is worth? A lot. Do you get to go? To, you get to be a guest at his house for lunch and play a game of pickup basketball, and that's oh, and that's not even the top prize. And he'll even shoot at the free throw line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow! Yeah. See, that would be good if like he could only shoot free throws, and you could say you beat Shaq, <laughs> and then you just break. It was the backboard. close, but I got it. <laughs> I shattered his w. own backboard. <laughs> I don't know. To me, like talking about Shaq Fu is infinitely more entertaining than I feel Shaq Fu actually will be. But uh, before we get started with the podcast, Beetle had mentioned that that they're actually getting good developers to work on this game. It's basically Shaq is like himself has recognized like the first one was bad, uh, but he still recognized like the cult following of it. Yeah. So he's saying for this round, I mean, he's doing for like the whatever how like how much is he asking for? Four hundred forty-five. Yeah, four hundred fifty million. Yeah, four hundred thousand. I mean, four hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of that money because he's already talking about like developers coming from uh, Street Fighter, the developers of Halo, and like some people from Mortal. I think it's Mortal Kombat and like some other games. Also, Alan Wake and Spec Ops: The Line. Yeah, I just read that. Alan wow. Wake and Spec All Ops: right. The Line. He like he has these people in mind. He like yeah. want. I, I don't know if they've already signed up for him. They just need money. 
or if um, but those are the people that are gonna be working on Shag Food too. And so he has a little if you go to Shore you can <laughs> and uh, he has a video, I guess like a, his Kickstarter video mm-hmm. where it's um, but uh, it shows like the the game, not the gameplay, but it shows like the the trailer for it, uh-huh. and he's like, it's like it's all shell shaded. The graphics look pretty crisp, and it's just you know, basketball player fighting a bunch of ninjas in the middle of a crossroads, <laughs> littered and with the, icy hot. Yeah, eggs. And it just goes, <laughs> yeah, it just goes up all like you know all the ripped abs and the muscles and stuff, and it goes all the way to his face, and he turns around, it's just like that goofy and ass it, shack. And it shoots oh, to yeah. Shaq like, with a little, yeah. with the forty year old gut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would, so if you can play current Shaq, I would no, play. No, but he has like like. Like fighter muscles, yeah. not like not like his regular fifty. He's got like the shoulders and like yeah, it looks really good. At it, but it like um, but that's what I'm saying. I want like yeah. real Shaq DLC where he's old and his knees are all messed up. <laughs> he's got like mustard on his shirt, <laughs> eating too many bologna sandwiches. And I want like power ups to be Shaq soda and um, icy hot, like everything that he's endorsed. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I think he even did Snickers. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did candy, but it's like shameless product placement yeah. throughout Nike, the entire oh no, he, thing. Was he Reeboks or Nikes? I don't know. I don't know if he was Pumas. Nike. I don't know if he was ever Nike. I could Adidas, be wrong. Maybe it was Adidas. Adidas. Yeah. Yeah. All day. You get like an Adidas <laughs> boost. Dude, Adidas would, would be the perfect um, marketing because all day I dream about, about Shaq, Shaq Fu. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! But no, the uh, oh sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead because this is kind of like off topic. So yeah. you finish. Just one more you thing. Finish. Just one more gem from like if you watch the video, just go to sure you can stop uh, where I saw it. But you'll see the you know the intro, the video, and then uh, Shaq is talking about it. He's promoting it. He's telling about all developers he's gonna get, and at the end he goes, "I promise I won't boo it up this time." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and he goes, and he literally says, "You like that? You like that?" Oh my God. Donated. He's just so goofy. Like I can't help but like yeah. it. You know? But um, I just donated the entire pit war budget. Yeah. Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of the rest. I want that shirt. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to see uh, Michael Jordan in Big Trouble in the Windy City Part Two. <laughs> I forgot that game existed until right, right now. Trouble in the Windy City. I oh, think it was like a, the dumbest title. Yeah, I, think was, yeah. <laughs> I remember being like ten years old and looking at that. I was like, that sounds. That's dumbness. That sounds didn't... like the dumbest title. Was it like... co-starring Kurt Russell? No, it was like it was just sh- it was just Shaq. It was uh, Shaq Jordan. It was Michael <laughs> Jordan, like kind of like turned around or something, um. and it just said "Trouble in the Windy City." And he's like cleaning up the streets of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally with like a broom and dustpan. Yeah. I wonder if that's and why jazz music. <laughs> I wonder if that's why if that's why he never gave like his likeness to anybody else to put him yeah. in a video game. He's like, no, only no, the Haynes. <laughs> yeah, only the Haynes. Yeah, because like even in every NBA game, would just be player. Like player one, yeah, or custom created, yeah, you know, M Jordan. They should, yeah. they should just call him Michael B Jordan. Number twenty three. <laughs> <laughs> we got yeah. Michael B Jordan. That's what they're gonna recast him as in the next game. Just give him the beady eyes. <laughs> so apparently, one other good thing that's coming out of Shaq Fu is that he he's promised to donate five percent of profits of the game to the Boys and Girls Club of America. Nice. And apparently, he's already donated one million USD to help fund technology centers in the club's facilities. Cool. Nice. Yeah, that's what I feel like when you watch like the video. And so I don't know if you haven't seen it yet, but um, I don't know. I just feel like like <laughs> like it's something. It felt like it's something that he just wanted to do. Yeah. Like I feel like he just thought like the community would love it, mm-hmm. and like his fans would love it, so he's doing it again. He's you know just looking around for the best people that will handle it. He's just like I'm gonna give them money, and we're gonna make this, and it's gonna be crazy, and it's gonna be fun. Tickles your wiener. Yeah, it was just make you feel good, and yeah, it just feels it feels right. So do you feel like the game will be a slam dunk? <laughs> I think it's gonna be a home or, will it, or, run. or will it be a flagrant foul? <laughs> I, I, just, I just hope that if this is successful, he takes all this money and he makes a Kickstarter and he tries to make Steel too. Oh no! Or Shazam I would, I'd rather see. I'd rather see Kazam. What about Kazam meet Steel? Kazam and he plays both characters. Oh god! Dude, but one's like fat and pudgy. What if they fight? Kazam and Steel. They yeah, just fight. they gotta fight. I want. I wish I bet for you he would pizza. Have just come the kid wishes for pizza. <laughs> Give me pizza. He's like, <laughs> we got pizza. It's like the pizza raining from the sky. P R Z Z A. I want pizza. God. But yeah, but as, it out for me, honey. <laughs> but as you can tell, we're very excited for Shaq Fu. Yeah, I'm no, definitely. I don't know if it's I'm gonna not. be like um, like an adventure game, like a fighter. It's gonna like be a 2D fighter. fighter. No, but like a 2D fighter or like a DMC Capcom fighter. No, like type. I don't know. From the, from the, I mean, they both have combos. It was anything they'll like, have me if they make it a Dynasty Warriors. Dynasty Warriors Shaq Fu. Yeah, if they <laughs> oh make it God. like if they make it a beat 'em up style, like the Legend of Zelda Warriors, whatever. I feel like they're going to because if you look at the trailer, that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like a fighting. If it's game. hack and slash, I'm all I'm down. 
In fact, yeah, that's what looking, it has, they, there are screenshots, so I think it is actually going to be a hack and slash slash beat em up. Cool. Nice. So there it looks, you go. It looks pretty good, right? I want some AoEs. I mean, so, like in the, in the stages? Give me AoE. Give me AoE. Let's turn this into an RPG. Give me a jump in AoE and I'm down. <laughs> Let me give him that bleeding damage when I jump on him. Give me option select. Let me get that, that gold tendon debuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a real-time FADC. Yo, Charles Barkley, where's that assist? <laughs> <laughs> For $750, you get Shaq Tube. Shaq will record you a personalized 20-second video message. Like every so, time you log into the game, it plays it? Um, I think you just watch it on your YouTube or something. <laughs> That's dumb. Is this Shaq? Shaq sitting there with like piles of money. Hey, kid. I want, I want <laughs> the code in the game to have it. Hey, Jay. It's me. Just kill new. <laughs> I yeah, hope you're enjoying your free 24 pack of uh, Shaq soda <laughs> and uh, lifetime supply. Is it lifetime? No, they're telling me a year supply of icy hot. Here's some free Adidas socks. <laughs> I hope Adidas. you hope you like the game. Thank you for donating ten dollars, cheap son of a bitch. And just for the hell of it, here's a used pair of Hanes. <laughs> no, let's just leave it there. Michael Jordan says hello. <laughs> yeah, right, sucker. Oh my god. But anyway, but moving on to, to other games. No, if you excuse me, I got some free throw line practice. <laughs> yeah. you. Does he even play anymore? No. Shaq? He's been retired for like five years. Shaq has? Yeah. Yes. He's got oh. he's got no knees. <laughs> That's why he's got oh, a that wasn't the joke. Does he really have like a Well because like pretty much any really big basketball I mean, he's player had knee surgery like five times. He's gonna have really bad knees. <laughs> the, the because of all, Steve Austin yeah, pretty much. Because it's like all the impact. Just imagine yeah. being like yeah, three hundred sure. pounds and just all that. Yeah, I think all that running it's like Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In total, like, thousands of miles. Yeah. I think it's more than jumping, though. But anyway, well, so, yeah. <coughs> the news was broke by IGN, the most reputable source, that uh, one, the <coughs> pretty much their head writer, who's wrote for, you know, the Uncharted series, Amy Henning, and they pretty yeah, much... she was Naughty Dog's head writer for all the Uncharted games. Yeah. yeah she's good. And IGN had uh, claimed that she was forced out, and uh, Naughty Dog came to set the record straight. Yeah. On based on good authority from a local rumor, <laughs> Naughty Dog actually came out and uh, and uh, disavowed any of that. And uh, uh, here's a quote from Naughty Dog: uh, "Normally, we wouldn't respond to rumors and speculation on matters that are internal to Naughty Dog, but because the personal reputation of two of our employees is being damaged." <coughs> IGN's bitch asses. Yeah. We needed to set the record straight. There is nothing left to be said on this subject. Now we're going back to what we should be focused on. Making games. And I agree. Yeah, make some games. I want to play some games. Yeah. Naughty dogs. We might talk about this later. We can talk about the game in more detail. But just the thing about IGN. Uh, when South Park Stick of Truth came out, uh-huh. IGN spoiled the ending of the game in the second sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Angry, you know, Angry Joe. I love Angry Joe. Yeah. Um, like but yeah, he was just like he was making his, and he puts like a, you know, Banger Joe puts like a lot of depth mm. in like character and production and all oh, his yeah. reviews. So it always takes like a week or a week and a half to come out after the game. But um, but he was putting it up. He's like, I'm about to upload a little bit, so I just came up on my YouTube. Like it's you know gonna be uploading, and then he's just like, I can't believe that some people at IGN are already <laughs> spoiling like all their other reviews are already like. <laughs> Spoiling the game as if nobody cared about the story of South Park mm. or something like that. Like everybody knows, you know, in the review you're going to put in like screenshots and stuff oh, like yeah. that. But, like to blatantly just give it away just because it's a South Park game. Mm. Seems like what everybody was doing. I was just like, I went to IGN because I don't really care. Am I going to get it? Yeah. But um, I was just like, wow. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be, you know, it's just it's South Park, so it can be argued. But like some people don't care. But the mm. fact that they just like blatantly just like say the ending of the game. It's like at the very yeah. least, it's like you know you can always have like spoilers beyond this yeah. point. You know, like yeah. not even to have the courtesy to do that. Yeah, a big thing came out of it, but I don't know if they got edited or just left it how it is, but it was just like, yeah, when you get to the end and this, you know, this event, they describe the event. Yeah. So they didn't say, like, what happens, but they're just like, yeah, you just, really? Like, yeah, so when you start yeah. the game, like, oh. if you read that review and you start the game, you already know what you're leading into. Oh, uh, right. so It's just like, you know. It's just the whole adventure, you know. Yeah, exactly. The whole point of the game is, like, it's like a like an eighteen hour game, so mm-hmm. it's like basically basically playing through a whole season of South Park. Oh, I see. And so the, by just like randomly just putting in a sentence there, you know. Yeah. It's just like wow, IGN. <laughs> yeah. No common sense. IGN screwing the pooch again. Yeah. But yeah, but as it relates to Do- Naughty Dog, <coughs> yeah, it's almost like they just jumped the gun. They're like, oh well, that's the only way it would have happened. She was forced out. So I'm glad that Naughty Dog came out there to you know set the record straight. 
and let people know, you know, what happened. What I'm really curious about is why she left. You know, I'm sure she probably had some other projects, or maybe she was just kind of, you know, she felt like it, you know, her time there just run its course. Yeah. But I think it's unfortunate because mm-hmm. it's like the Unchar- the writing in the game of Uncharted is what yeah. one of the huge points oh, that yeah. makes it so good. It's yeah. you know, Nathan Drake wouldn't be Nathan Drake without the yeah. writing. Like he's even for so all charming. our gripes in the third one, where it was like, yeah, the game felt very predictable. The story was still incredible. Oh yeah, like the- it was still a very enthralling experience. It was just <laughs> it had the, it the had only this- thing that that really killed it for I think all of us. I could say. It's just that the, the predictability of, of the real time like mm, falling. Yeah. Oh yeah, so it was, you know it's just like eh, we've we've done mm, this before. So, we've been down this road, but the story was still incredible. Oh yeah, and then the spoiler at the end. I won't spoil it. No, uh, no. even though a lot of people have played it already. But the whole reveal and then like uh, and when uh, certain characters die and blah blah blah. Yeah, and then. Then when you see what happens, it's just like, oh my god, this is, <laughs> yeah. wow, I would have never guessed. Awesome. Thing, it has the twists and stuff, but I feel about Uncharted 3 is pretty, pretty much the same exact way. It's just like, it's a new story. Mm. She does like, you know, she checks her like historical facts oh, yeah. and like the locations mm-hmm. and like how, you know, everything. And so she ties it in with the story, making it fiction mm-hmm. stuff and tie it into uh, the mythos of, you know, you know the, the certain historical stuff. Yeah. And so she does a fantastic job of doing that in all the games. But three followed the same formula as far as mm-hmm. unveiling, like, oh, yeah, like you yeah. know, there's gonna be a twist at this point. You know, this is gonna happen. You know, he's gonna fall off of every freaking ledge. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but it's still it's still a great story. Oh, it's yeah. a great game. But yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, I would liken it to like Raiders of the Lost Ark mm-hmm. versus the Temple of Doom. Mm. You know, they're okay. still both great stories, and they follow basically the same formula. So in my opinion, you couldn't really hold one against the other because they're both great stories and if you never played two and you played three you would get that same experience mm-hmm. oh yeah although I feel well a little bit biased that you should probably start with two to get that experience first and mm-hmm. then run into three you know yeah I would always want to say start with three because then when you get to two you're going to be like oh man this game's so much better two's definitely yeah, best yeah because yeah. yeah. so, yeah. like not taking anything away from Drake's Fortune the oh. first one it's still a great game it's just um, you can tell it was like there. it was like in between that um because, you know, Naughty Dog went through that whole programming phase and had oh, to scrap everything yeah. and redo it when the PS3 came out. Because mm-hmm. they were initially going to put Drake's Fortune on PS2. Yeah. Scrap everything, redo it, and then Drake's Fortune came out. It's still a good game. It's solid. Well, not only that, Except but it didn't reach that extreme learning curve yeah. Yeah, of yeah. having to learn um, the PS3 specs. Exactly. And that's why Drake's Fortune falls a little bit short. Mm-hmm. But as far as the story goes, the story's, oh, yeah. the story's great. It's, it's a treasure hunting story and it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, and then you go to two, and you know, Uncharted two is just a masterpiece. Oh yeah, like I have no other word for it. It's mm-hmm. like I don't know anything bad about that game. Yeah, the only thing bad I, I thought about three was just the same formula. Mm-hmm. Everything else, it's fun to play. It's a great story. It's interesting to hear him talk about like like be Indiana Jones, you oh, know, like, yeah. and talk about the history of the items that he's mm-hmm. doing. It's just yeah. like yeah, kind of like the same reason like. Um, uh, like Tomb Raider, sometimes when she goes into the tombs, she'll describe like, "Oh, this is from this era, uh, yeah, and this yeah. is from the old Japanese stuff." Yeah. yeah, so I always enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah, but I'm looking forward to whatever Naughty Dog does next, even if they won't have a uh, what's her name now, Amy, Amy Henning. Henning involved. Want, yeah, daughter want, of Kurt Henning. <laughs> they're one of the few <laughs> companies perfect. I will give a. No matter what game they make next, I'll give them like the benefit of the doubt. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm still looking forward to playing the uh, Last of Us DLC, mm-hmm. but uh, Fuzzy Slipper still has my copy. So, Mr. Slippers, if you're listening, give me back my copy so I can play the DLC. Oh, okay. uh, um, Last of Us. Yeah, Last of Us. So I can play um, the Ellen Page DLC. <laughs> oh, the... Uh, I forgot what it's called. But yeah, the DLC. Yeah. <laughs> the only DLC. Well, <coughs> moving on. Yeah. So, uh, I know, Beetle, you've had some experience with uh, Titanfall, the beta. So uh, let yeah. us know how, how that was. So, Titanfall is... <sighs> Titanfall's sick. Uh-huh. It is... So it's a uh, it's going to be a six v six game. Mm-hmm. Max players are going to be twelve at a time. So a lot of there's a lot of rage on it, but now it's kind of like everybody kind of understands. So yeah. basically, I don't know if you know anything about the game, but it's made by Respawn. You know, so uh, it basically feels a lot like Call of Duty. They, they added a they have a prestige mode in there as well. But the mechanics you can parkour everywhere. Oh, like you nice. have like a like a wall run and stuff uh, like that. It's very you're a very agile soldier. Mm. But it's that's like only mirrors edge kind of exactly. That's what it, that's what it is. You're very agile soldier. Everybody's an agile soldier. There's mm-hmm. no different class. I mean, there's different classes. Anyways, agile soldier. So that's half the game. The other half is that everybody has a mech. Everybody has a titan. So um, basically, you can call your titan anytime you want. It's like five seconds of titanfall. You can look up at the sky and it shows like 
you can literally see your Titan like coming down. Oh, it just nice. falls right there. And when it when your Titan falls on the ground, it's mm-hmm. like a big like capsule shell, and it creates a or not not. Well, it just comes down, right? It hits the ground, and then like huge shield goes around it. Mm. No matter where you are, because you you parkour everywhere, you know, yeah. you're wall running and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so you can just do it nonstop. Call your Titan. You see your Titan falling, uh-huh. run towards it. It busts up a shield for a few seconds. You just jump on it, and it grabs you, and it pulls oh, you into nice. it, and then you just get into it. So nice. no matter where you approach your Titan from, it'll grab you and put you inside it. Nice. So if you go under it and just like activate it there, it'll like reach between its legs and uh-huh. put you inside. And so it's a very um. So, and if somebody else is in a Titan, like you were in a Titan, mm. I would run up behind you and I'll just jump on top of your Titan. I'll just ride on on top <laughs> nice. of you. I'll just shoot people to cover you, because at the same time when you're in a Titan, other soldiers that are around, mm. they can jump on your back and they can take off the shell and they can just start shooting the shit uh, out of your uh, thing until yeah. you, uh, you know, until the um, you know, your damage starts mm. going haywire and stuff. So they open the cockpit. Yeah, and then they can open the cockpit. At the same time that you can open the cockpit, you can you have an eject. Oh, so you just okay. pull the seat, and then it just launches you nice. like 300 feet in the air. <laughs> so <laughs> you can launch yourself, right? Like mm. when you're in trouble about to explode like you would do. So you just launch yourself. At the same time, if someone shoots you or another Titan is next to you, yeah. it will snatch you out of your seat. You just launch and just, <laughs> boom, the Titan will just come down. Yeah. Is it like the Hulk and the Avengers? Pretty much. Cause, and then like... There's three different types of Titan. There's a, it's like a Goliath, the regular Titan, and the faster Titan. Basically, a, a, you know, what you would think a fast, medium, yeah, Titan, yeah. You know, heavy, slow, <coughs> heavy, slow, lots of damage. Mm-hmm. Small, faster, no damage. So, um, but they're not that much. They're not like tiny. You know, they're mm. still Titans. Yeah. So, anyways, um, just the the gameplay that switches between going from a soldier and then you go inside your Titan, it's just so cool. Like you have all your weapons. All Titans have like this deflect where you just like hold out. Mm. Any bullets that are coming towards you, you'll hold them like Matrix style, oh, nice. and you just shoot them back at them. You have your primary weapons and stuff, and then um, you can just go melee, just go like ham with the freaking uh, nice. with your Titan and just knock the crap out of people. And if another Titan, if someone's in a Titan mm. and you're beating the crap out of them, they're about to die, and you can like melee them like mm. towards the front or something. You'll snatch the pilot out of the middle <laughs> and just snatch them out of the Titan. And at that point, you can either throw them uh, up or yeah. you can throw them to the side. Nice. You throw nice. them up. You just throw them up like 300 feet in the air, uh-huh. and they're dead, and people just like shooting at them if they happen to come <laughs> back down. If you just throw them like left or like to the side, mm. they're dead. Nice. It's just so freaking immersive and cool. Uh-huh. And they're so fast paced, and like the environments, the way you interact with them, like with the parkour, like you can literally keep running and not stop. Oh, wow. Like you'll just keep going, running off of walls. You jump off a wall, and there's like a window in the house. You like go through the window. Like it's all seamless, and it all works like, nice. you, like you would expect it to, mm. you know? Like there's no delay. It's just, it's really well made, you know? Like you're doing really good on it. The only thing at the last minute, last week, because we're going to release it without any kind of, you know, like any kind of like EA, you know, microtransactions and stuff like that. Uh, then at the last minute, they added a season pass. <laughs> it's like, well, we're going to have DLC in the future. We're going to have a season pass, which makes sense because mm. it's going to be successful. Oh, yeah. Because it works and it's really good and it works great mm. in the beta. Like, it's on the Battlefield beta where you're like <laughs> glitching everywhere and stuff like that, which is expected <laughs> in a beta. But this beta ran pretty, um, pretty damn smooth. The game is really fun. Um, I'm not even into shooters. I'm not going to play it because mm. I, um, I don't have an Xbox One. I'm not going to turn on my 360. I'm not going to play it on PC. That's just me. I play RPGs and I play fighting games. Mm. And I play stealth games. And um, but yeah, it's uh, I recommend it for any shooter fan. Mm. It's going to be like a Call of Duty experience without the um, without feeling like the same gameplay. Mm. It's completely separate than Call of Duty, but it has like the same functions. You know, obviously yeah. it's the same people. You're going to prestige. You get your weapons. You're going to get like different loadouts and stuff like that. But Looking forward to it. It seems like what it is, it's like, because, you know, it's from the people that f- formerly made Call of Duty or Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. And it's like, they got booted out or they left or whatever. And it's just like, since then, Call of Duty's just recycled the same game. Yeah, it's because, like, I, yeah. Oh, good. I was going to say, but it's like, now they have their own company. It's like, this is what we would have done had we stayed. Now we can actually evolve the, f- the first person shooter genre. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Not to, like, you know, like, jerk off EA or anything just because I worked there, but um, basically. Because you know they you know got fired for Activision and stuff because Activision just wanted to you know just you know put out the same thing every year and every year to make the cash cow, and so basically when they went to EA, he's like, all right, you can remain separate. We're going to give you a whole bunch of money, yeah, and you just do what you're going to do. Mm. That's exactly what they did. They made the most out of that money, uh, and they're making this fantastic game. Yeah, and um, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a great like relationship, you know, mm. because they're not like. <laughs> 
they're not adding too much. They're not being like, no, there's not like battle packs or stuff you can buy and stuff like that. <laughs> they're very remaining independent, mm. you know, from e from like the EA formula. Because oh, you don't you don't want to go into the EA formula, mm-hmm. you know. What happened to Battlefield? Battlefield Four is still having problems. Oh, it, yeah. it doesn't work right. Um, you know, it has um, you know, the EA formula. You know, just you buy a game. There's going to be a season pass, and there's mm-hmm. going to be microtransactions. You can expect that from most of them. But uh, for this <laughs> game, they're having that. It just feels. You know, the guys that made Call of Duty, uh, it just made it even better. And you oh, have yeah. mechs, and you have parkour, and it's just, it's a fun time. And the 6v6, just to make that not sound as small, mm. um, the, 6v6, the 6v6 is because, not only because every person has a Titan, mm. but because there's so much stuff going on, and there's a lot of AI. Uh, so there's a ton of AI in the game as well. Mm. So during the matches, like, feeling like an army, instead of just, like, 24 on 24, there's going to be a shitload of things going on. Yeah. But only, a, you know, six people with their, you know, with their own mechs are going to be playing. Nice. Yeah. So, which I think is good, because everybody's like, oh, we want 24, you know, <laughs> players and stuff like that. I think it's good that they're limiting it, because then they know that they're probably going to have to sacrifice, like, gameplay. Oh, yeah, If they're yeah. going to do that, so... I think not only that, but there's there's probably limitations they've experienced on the Xbox One to where they have to make those limitations. Because mm-hmm. the game, does, like you said, the game does seem very heavily graphically demanding. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a... It's a looker. <laughs> so it's one thing having, like, Modern Warfare 2, the last game they had made. Yeah. Call of Duty being, runs on a potato, yeah. Being, 12, <laughs> being, you know, 12 on 12. Yeah. You know, 24 total, and here it's... This time around, it's it's 6v6, you know? 6v6, and everybody has their own Titan. So I think that evens out, you know? Yeah. And especially with a whole bunch of AI. Mm -hmm. Like, like the the AI during beta was pretty ass. Like, they would would hesitate by, like, a couple seconds before shooting. Yeah. Which, during the heat of the moment, a couple seconds, it's it's basically like they're not shooting at you at all, Mm -hmm. you know? But uh, they said they're fixing that, so they're aware of it. But that's, like, one of the main, like, only, like, bad things they've been Uh, doing. I think the other thing is, like, if you ever remember watching... uh, I'm going to get a little Gundam geeky on you. Do it. Uh, eighth MS team. Yes. Oh, it's yeah. it, Like in the last episodes, um, it was like the whole eighth MS team, which is like seven or eight mobile suits. Mm-hmm. It, they were all in this small town versus this one Neo Zeon mobile suit. Uh-huh. And the dude was like owning up on them. And it was like taking all these strategies, mm-hmm. you know, for the team to take them down. And it's yeah. like, well, you know, they were just in this small little town. And there was only, like, you think it's, like, eight mobile suits total. Yeah. It's just like, well, think, if if all these Titans are on the ground at the same time, and these, you know, I guess more or less uh, decent-sized uh, maps, yeah, yeah, I think 12's a good a good amount, especially if everyone's in the in the, in the the uh, Titans at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then, I don't know, I, I'm thinking of it like Gundam and the way yeah. hey, this team was, uh, was written, but it's like, yeah, you could use very strategic locations, yeah. hide, hiding behind buildings, yeah. um, ducking for cover. If you're, if you're uh, wondering like anything like about gameplay of Titanfall, really talking about it really doesn't do it justice. You just have to see at least like a minute and you'll you'll see it like you'll yeah. see the like the in-game <clears throat> gameplay because it's only multiplayer. They're not putting in a trashy oh, campaign yeah. just to do it. They're <laughs> yeah, complete, there is no campaign. Yeah, they're yeah. completely aware that mm-hmm. it's going to be. They're selling it for multiplayer. You know, they're not going to yeah. put in a trash well, campaign. Well, you know, and just I think the it. thing was, and this is kind of more like assumptive, but I don't think they ever really wanted to add the storyline in uh, Modern Warfare Two. Because I mean, I, mm-hmm. that never felt like the focus ever. Not even with the first, uh, uh, well, Call of Duty Four. That never yeah. felt like the focus. Even though the Modern Warfare Two you know, story it was, was like, let's yeah, make this fun enjoyable. multiplayer game. Uh, it was okay. Well, the second one was it was okay. Okay for know. the yeah for shooter standards. It's for shooter standards. Yeah. It was it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but like you know, the multiplayer cent. was where where it was at. You know, yeah. and 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 Modern Warfare Two for all the crap it it, it went through. That was the game that got me into FPS again. Yeah, I remember that. You know, that, you know, once I got my PS3, that was like the second game I owned. Or the mm. first game, actually, yeah. First game I owned. Yeah. And then I think it was Uncharted 2 after that. But yeah, close second. Yeah. Then Bad Cow came along. Yeah. And but, then uh, Gundam 2. But yeah, but like I was saying, just <coughs> watch a video of it. When you see the Titans rolling around, like, the soldiers fighting alongside Titans, you think, like, you know, the Titans just own soldiers yeah. free. Which they do, because you can just stomp on people. But it's... <laughs> You know, but they're so agile. You know, the parkour when yeah. it comes to being there's a soldier. There's going to be those guys. Yeah, there's going to be those guys you know, that are they, just like, I saw like... Like in Modern Warfare, I, I would always find dudes, not always, but you'd, you'd find the guys. And you find them in Battlefield too. Mm-hmm. All they do is knife kills. <laughs> All they do is what? All they do is knife kills. Yeah. And they're insanely good at it. There's the there's the people when I was playing the beta. I was uh, playing the beta, you know, co-workers and stuff like that. 
Uh, before it was, um, well, it was the it was the, during the open beta at this point. Well, the closed open beta <laughs> it was closed beta, but they were just handing out beta keys. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're in there. Like, there's there's definitely those people who are just like they go in for the knife kills, right? Mm. So in Titanfall, it's just like when you see those those tryhards. Yeah. Where they're just going at you. When you see it in Titanfall, you're just like, especially if you're in a Titan, uh, and you're just like do do do, just messing shit up and just like getting away from people. It's like knocking people back, stomping uh, on people. You just see this one guy just like jumping from roof. He jumps off. He like slides off a billboard and like lands on a rooftop. Uh, and jumps to, like the other roof, just like da da da, falling. Then all of a sudden, he just jumps on your head. And you just <laughs> you can't do anything. You're just like flailing. He's uh, like shooting. The yeah. shit or your brain, that like one of the teammates just like pop him, like shoot him off. You just see his body like come through like the <laughs> visor and like fall down, and then nice. like, like I've had so many people just like run up on me, uh, like come from under. I'm just like, oh, where do you go? Come behind, they're on my head, uh, and all of a sudden my damage is like going down like dramatically oh, because wow. they like open up the shell yeah. and they start shooting the wires. I just freaking like boom, just hop my uh, my evacuation thing, uh, pop it right out of the sky. The Titan like sh- like rocket launches me out of the sky. <laughs> like, God, this is so bad. <laughs> Just the the fast paced action and stuff. It's really, it's really well paced. Yeah, I guess I would say it's not like <laughs> you're not. Nobody's at a strict. No one is at a a huge advantage. Mm-hmm. You're not at a full advantage when you're a titan. You're not at a full advantage when you're a soldier. Yeah, it's like a perfect mix. Like you have to like call your titan, get out of your titan, mm-hmm. go and do something else, and like go jump back on your titan. Because when you're not in your titan, one last thing. When you're not in your Titan, it walks around by itself and it'll cover you. Mm. It'll walk around shooting people. Like, he doesn't have to be manned. Uh, it won't, like, okay. go, like, off and, like, start yeah. doing strategies, but it'll just, like, patrol. Mm-hmm. You know? Then when you're ready, you just go find it and you just, like, jump in it and stuff. Nice. So it's really, um, it's really cool. I would watch a video and get into it. <coughs> if you're into that kind of thing, if you have Xbox One, Xbox 360, or PC, you should play it. Well, I might spend the $10 to fix my 360. I might check it out. <laughs> Yeah, I might take my 360 out of somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Blow the dust off of it. Oh, yeah, I remember you, 360. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back into the fold. Put it next to the PlayStation. PlayStation's like, ugh. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Blow it on the disc like Nintendo cartridges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did that the other day with like a um, a USB card or not USB a um, SD card. I'm like, well, maybe this will work. <laughs> Remember the PlayStation One uh, DVDs? They're all black. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, those demo the demo the Pizza demo- Hut <laughs> the Pizza Hut demo games. Oh yeah, <laughs> they like Crash those. Bandicoot. We and... never had we never had a PlayStation to play them on. Yeah, yeah. Let's try to stick them into the Saturn. Yep. I think we gave them to our friend like CD. Yeah. I think he was the only person that had a PlayStation. <laughs> no. He was the cool kid on the block. Ah. Um, but anyway. So apparently, uh, to move it on, the so the Sony uh, CEO Jack Jack Trenton is leaving at the end of the month. Yeah, it's kind of sad, um, but not really. Uh, he's been with the company since 1995. He's stepping down at the end of the month, March 31st, um, and I think he's going to be succeeded by Chief Operating Officer Sean Layden, mm. and he's also. Yeah, he was previously uh, the president of SCE or S yeah SCE Japan. Yeah, yeah. international. I guess. CJ. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> the departure comes as a result of a mutual agreement between Trenton and uh, SCEA not to renew the contractual relationship. So it's not that he got fired or anything. It's just mm. like, yeah, we're not going to renew yeah. the contract. Um, calling this time with the company the most rewarding experience of his career. Trenton said, although I will deeply miss the talented team at SCEA and the passion demonstrated every day by our fans, I'm very excited about starting the next chapter of my career. I want to thank the employees, partners, and customers for their tireless commitment to the PlayStation brand and, of course, to our fans who have pushed us to new heights of innovation and entertainment over the past two decades. I'll leave PlayStation in a position of considerable strength and the future will only get brighter for PlayStation Nation. And to you, Jack Trenton, I say thank you. I think, mean, like, after his speech, he walked off stage, and he just had, like, one tear drop in his eye, and he exited the building, got into a dump truck full of money, and drove away. Yeah. <laughs> Promise you wouldn't do this, old boy. <laughs> you go home and play yeah. thief. He's he's dabbing the teardrops with his $100 bills. Like, <laughs> Sony, you meant so much to me. You know, it's funny, because he always had these really, like, awkward speeches. Uh-huh. Uh, especially when listening to him the last couple of years, yeah. And then that weird commercial with Kevin Butler, where they're like playing. A, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, was it the? Uh, was it Little Big Planet? But it was like the cart. Oh, Mod Nation Racers. Yeah, Mod Nation Racers. And, and like I don't know, he just seemed really odd. Like he had no real online personality mm-hmm. or no like TV personality. Yeah. It was just kind of bland, but at the same time, it was like unintentionally humorous. Mm. <laughs> 
because he just had this kind of like dryness about him that was <laughs> kind of like a little bit um, British humor yeah. type. So it's like it was just unintentionally funny all the mm-hmm. time. Like so he tried to deliver a joke on the stage and it just kind of fell flat. And it's uh, just like you kind of laugh at that. Yeah. And then it kind of sinks in later. It's like he's, I'm sure he's a funny guy like at home mm-hmm. or with friends where he, maybe he feels more impressed. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. But like in the big – you know, when he's on stage. I mean, he can carry himself well. The guy mm. can speak. Mm-hmm. But it's just as far as, like, carrying jokes, he just has this, like, really, like... Yeah. Kind of, not not a shit-eating grin, but just kind of, like, this nervous smile. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just funny. I wish they would have said that Kevin Butler was the one replacing him. Dude, that would be awesome. I <laughs> wish they would just bring actor. Kevin Butler just back. Totally. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't have any experience, but I look mm-hmm. good in commercials. Mm-hmm. I will say... Uh, PlayStation commercials aren't the same without Kevin I Butler. I agree. The new guy they have, I kind of like him, though. Cause is, I just, he, is he the guy like the the Dare to Be More or something like that? Yeah, that guy. Cause it's like the first one where it's like the two knights are fighting and he's about to get like his face smashed in. He just has like a smile on his face. I'm like, all right, I like this guy. Mm-hmm. But uh, Kevin Butler, it's good stuff. <laughs> Return to Sony <laughs> instead of getting sued by them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, Jack Trenton, we'll miss you. Thanks for all the good years of PlayStation goodness. Why well, is the company like the bombs now that he's gone? <laughs> <laughs> But Sony Entertainment America is dissolved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were sold for three bitcoins. <laughs> three bitcoins. <laughs> All right. Well, and other news. This is uh, somewhat old from last month, but it's still pretty important to talk about. So basically, Bioshock laid off the vast majority of its staff. I think they have. I think they laid off everybody but like 15 people. That's what it is. All is it, uh, 15 uh, members. Irrational games? Yeah, rational games. Wow. Yeah. And so basically. Uh, the founder and creative director, Kevin Levine, he he was kind of saying that he's going in a new direction with the company, and he wants to make it more like a akin to like an indie startup company. So I'm guessing they're doing something more like small scale, which is why... They're more they're small, small scale, but they're still going to be under the Take-Two brand. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's really interesting because it's not one of those things where... Because usually when there are layoffs, it's when something bad happens. Like they didn't, get, they didn't reach sales quotas or... You know, the game didn't sell or as glitchy as it's like, no, Bioshock Infinite was amazing. And yeah. it sold amazingly. Yeah. So it's like, it's like it's weird to follow up a success with like, well, thanks for all the hard work, guys. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta go. Well, you know, the coolest thing, like him on Facebook, they organized a job fair at the studio. Yeah. So they had like all these other companies, like EA was there hiring, mm-hmm. uh, trying to look for new talent. Yeah. yeah. Along with uh, BioWare. Mm-hmm. Um, Bethesda, uh, oh, Bethesda, I love them. Like all, it was like a who's who. Yeah, Microsoft, yeah. Like a who's who of developers. Basically, all the vultures were just out. <laughs> yeah, everyone's yeah. like looking for talent. It's just, yeah. it, it was amazing, you know, like everything that he pulled through, and then people that weren't finding so much luck, like you, they're like literally Facebook posts. I wish I would screenshot at some of these. It was like, hey, so and so, you know, here's a portfolio of his art, and he did this, and he did mm-hmm. this for this game, and mm. you know, he's got all these games under his belt. Somebody give me a call. Get this dude a job. He designed like that. Elizabeth's like, corset. That's a, that's, that's you like, couldn't ask for like. Yeah, you definitely. As, could as not. cool as he is, and wherever that guy, uh, with those people that he did that for, wherever they end up landing, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure it's going to be a good job. Yeah, they will not have the coolest bosses, Ken Levine. Exactly, and like you know, like um, like when you say like you know, Bioshock laid off have his employees and stuff. You can't say like, oh, they just got shafted and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. You, you can like like they they, they had prior notice. The guy was going out of his way to get them, you know, mm-hmm. just get them out like, oh, this guy's badass, he's badass. He, he literally just telling them, it was like, he's just not the direction that, you know, I'm yeah. going now, but, you, you know, somebody needs to yeah. needs to have this guy mm-hmm. on their team. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that's badass. Yeah, but pretty much he kind of outlined a little bit of what he's what he has. So basically his new, quote-unquote, new goal um, of his trim studio is like to make narrative-driven games for the core gamer that are highly replayable, to foster the most direct mm-hmm. relationship with their fans possible, and we will fo- focus exclusively on content delivered digitally. We need more replayable games. You know what else is crazy? What? Mm-hmm. He's writing the script for Logan's Run. Ah. I don't the know Logan, it it's, oh, a, it's an Logan old movie. Run. Yeah. Um, but John he's Logan's he's writing the script for the remake. And he's been working on it for a couple of months. So I always thought that was pretty... I mean, because he wrote the storylines for the Bioshock games. Mm. As far as I remember, I think it's all of them. Yeah. 
Turns out so, that's not bad at all. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, sick. I'm just like going off of. So memory. Logan's Run is going to be in the no, clouds. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if he wrote those games, like it's just like, no, it's going to be underwater. <laughs> yeah, and the sequel is going to be in the clouds. Yeah, Logan's Run, Logan's <laughs> Flight. Yeah, Logan's Flight. <laughs> mm. So yeah, that's cool. Ken Levine, is, as far as the gaming industry grows, probably uh, the coolest boss on the planet. Maybe next to Gabe Newell. <laughs> right up there with yeah, the, I would say, I would say Gabe Newell's right up there cool. with Peter Volodu. Yeah, right up there with, <laughs> with the goddess hand himself <laughs> and Seth Killian. <laughs> Douche, Seth Killian. But no. yeah. Seth Killian wasn't a boss; he was a community manager. Yeah. Whatever he was, this game he sucks. <laughs> Daigo is playing art right now. <laughs> he is playing. Ryu is his art. paintbrush. <laughs> my dick is art. Ken <laughs> is this canvas. Seth Killian starts has talking the most so soft. Ryu, and what he's doing right now, he's painting. His math turns into walking. I think this is his best work yet. <laughs> Daigo Creasy. Like Seth, he lost that round, but it was a master. <laughs> yeah. so but he loses so gracefully. But even artists sometimes lose. He sounds like a real life pieces. Vega. <laughs> yeah. He's so beautiful. Yeah. He's wearing the Vega mask with the claw. Where's my mask? Cut himself up, trying to like scratch himself. Where's my claw? Where's my... But yeah. Got rust on it. <laughs> yeah. I need some claw polish. James Chen is uncomfortable now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scratching his back. <laughs> Somebody braid my ponytail. <laughs> oh, a back scratcher, Vega claw? Oh, dude. That's got to exist. That's copyrighted oh, right now. Oh, yeah. I want it now. Dude. They were Yo! making it. <laughs> We're, we're, bringing, we're, bringing that, <laughs> so we're bringing that to the next classic game fest. Oh, yeah. You heard it from here yeah, first. Are. Yeah, made of wood. <laughs> we, are, of, we are not getting. And we should drop it in the middle of like the floor periodically and have to go pick it up again. <laughs> someone punches it off. Yeah. Of oh, yeah. he, he had it right. You scratched it rigorously. I'll slap it out of your face, and you just like did a little tuck and roll. Yeah, yo, 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 yo. Hey. Handsome fighters never lose. You just jump on the fence and then hop off and grab it. <laughs> You're scratching yourself. Handsome fighters never itch. <laughs> but when they do, they got a claw. <laughs> Get some Lotrimin. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Kevin Levine. Hopefully, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to what he's doing. It's really interesting. And wish him, I wish him and obviously all the people that were laid off the best of luck. Yeah, future. good luck out there, guys. Well, you know, it's funny to say it's like not. they weren't even laid off. They were mm-hmm. literally... Just transferred from one job to the other. Yeah, you know it's like, yeah. it's like reverse giving your two weeks. <laughs> it's like he's giving them their two weeks, mm-hmm. yeah. but within those two weeks, they're already at new jobs. Yeah, so there's no like unemployment period. Like for when did the, what, what, majority of these guys? Yeah, when you give like your employees like two weeks notice that they're going to be fired, and you bust your ass for mm-hmm. two weeks trying to get them another job, like. That's the, that's I don't true. know if it was actually two weeks, but you know that's called stimulating the economy. Hell yeah, that's being a good person. Yeah. Speaking of good people, Kevin Conroy returns in Batman oh, Arkham man. Knight. Yeah. I've only played half of Arkham Asylum still. It's the only <laughs> game I've seen in person. Yeah, I've only played Arkham Asylum. I'm a demo of Arkham City, but I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. I, I heard um, polarizing things, or conflicting things about Arkham Origin. Some people seem to love it. Some people seem to really hate it. And for some people, the, the, bo- the boss battle with Deathstroke is way too intense for them. But way too intense. Yeah, it's just like I don't know. They when I was reading about it, they liken it to like playing a fighting game, mm-hmm. which for us that's like, oh man, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. But for like the casual player, it's like this is no, this is terrible. Oh. Uh, but it's also like very like unforgiving. So you like miss like a, a like a block or a parry, then you're pretty much dead, and you mm-hmm. got to go through this whole like crazy long battle again. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. So that uh, that part is like the most appealing thing to me <laughs> for Ar- Arkham Origins. The rest yeah. of it. Seems kind of. I'm just thinking I'm in like third strike training mode. <laughs> but yeah. do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> do it again. Batman's his parent third strike style. Just <laughs> I'm going to play with my arcade stick and just. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. But uh, Arkham Knight seems interesting. Um, basically, this is going to end the. Uh, well, supposedly, this will supposedly, be the, yeah. <laughs> the last um, of the Arkham series. This will be the last one. To give it the Mark Hamill treatment. I will never do this again until <laughs> you give me more money. Yeah, here's another zero on your paycheck. Well, I'm back. <laughs> That's right, bats. That makes it one hundred whole dollars. <laughs> now I can afford this face paint. <laughs> but uh, basically, so Arkham Knight's going to be a new character. He's going to be a new villain created by Rockstar, and cool. he'll be the quote-unquote ultimate test for Batman. Damn. Yeah. So apparently, it's like the SAT, the ultimate test. Ah. Ah, Superman. Is that what it is? <laughs> Superman. <laughs> that would that would be hilarious. I'm the Arkham Knight. It's really a <laughs> Superman with like a, with glasses on. 
It's like, Clark, I know it's you. <laughs> he just tried to mix up Clark Kent and Superman. <laughs> Let's get fancy. Let's put on the, on the Superman suit, but keep the glasses and the tie. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, like, the, the biggest thing with this one is that now you can drive the Batmobile. So people you can't be, do that in any of the other ones? Nope. I know you can't do that in Asylum. You can drive it in the... In the um, in the cutscenes, <laughs> nice. I was thinking, well, uh, okay, I guess I guess Arkham City isn't that kind of open world. Where you're yeah. like on the road, you're like on the building top yeah, and stuff yeah. the whole time. Yeah. yeah, I hope that they really pull out all the stops for this, especially with this. It's only going to be next gen, so I hope they do really make oh, it like a real open world. They're going to have a lot of a lot of space, like a lot of stuff to work with. Yeah, because one of the big criticisms with Arkham Origins is it doesn't feel like a real world. It's like it pretty much the whole thing is a whole place is like pretty much on like a uh, curfew so there's yeah. no actual regular people around it's mm-hmm. just like goons yeah. like, what's the point of having an open world if there's no like random pedestrians like it should be like red dead where you're riding around and yeah. you have people you can save or people that are trying to screw you over generated yeah environments yeah and i think that would it would really benefit from that it would be it just makes it more interesting because yeah. it gets pretty repetitive to just mm-hmm. backtrack yeah. and just have like the same move set which is another thing like i swear this will make or break this game for me because what? Sleeping Dogs, that fighting engine, oh. was based off of the Arkham series. Mm-hmm. So now it's time for the Arkham series to up Sleeping Dogs. They like, need to up Sleeping yeah, Dogs. Yeah, I want them to be like, all right, we, we see your fighting system and we raise you Arkham Knight and it yeah. should just be badass. Like, I want some hip toss. <laughs> yeah. I want some uh, Oma Pilatus. Hip, hip. I-, I can forgive him not doing... <laughs> like the way Shen double leg take down ground and pound, <laughs> yeah. right? That's just a raging yeah. freaking undercover cop yeah. that's had too much to drink. <laughs> but uh, and nothing but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Just make it smoother, refine it. You know, I just um, want it to be more in depth. You yeah, because I just feel like they can. There's so much room for improvement, and the fact that it's See, been done. The coolest thing were if they did like a fight for New York, <laughs> um, fighting method uh-huh. where you can mix certain styles, and then like it would just automatically mix. The moves together. Mm. So if you had like boxing mixed with jujitsu, mixed yeah. with um, uh, like Muay Thai or something, then it would intermix all those techniques and yeah. like, have a very unique fighting style. And then that would be like how you fight for the rest mm. of the game. Or you know, you could take one out and put one in. So you would you could have three different fighting styles at any given time. Mm. You know, and it would all be like intermix. Or you can create these like very unique different combos. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, instead of just learning. 12 different martial arts within the game and then just having like this <coughs> crap shit storm of, of moves you could just actually create three and just be very creative yeah. and really tailor the game to how you like to play and fight yeah. to me even like a shit storm of moves would still be an improvement because it's like you pretty much have it like it would but you, I could see it being very overwhelming yeah to where you could people. actually be more creative by just picking like three unique styles and yeah. then just kind of intermixing them mm-hmm. together you know yeah or seeing what the game gives you mm-hmm. from that like the way fight for new york was where you pick two or three different styles and then like yeah. your fighter fought a very certain specific way yeah. you know i just want it to where it's like it's not just like the same kind of enemies i mean every now and then they'll throw someone different and you have to do a certain way to beat them yeah but i don't know i like it more like sleeping dogs where it's like there's certain guys where you can't throw because they're grapplers and there's certain yeah. guys that you can't that you have to like knee or whatever mm-hmm. so you have to switch up your style and you have to attack differently yeah. and it just mm-hmm. kind of keeps you on your toes yeah so and, and then then in the batman universe it just can get that much more mm-hmm. you know just fun and ridiculous yeah, when you have like what <laughs> not only that but like mixing like gadgets with your Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, combat. yeah, you pull up, like some injustice combos or something in game. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that'll be sick. Like, like, like we're just like the hard knockdown. They like, throws the batterings on the ground, yeah. rolls away, and like, oh, yeah, that'd be sick. Have but um, we'll run them over. But yeah, like, like Batman, they have so much to work off of. Mm-hmm. You know, they have so much content. Well, as of uh, you know, as contrast to Wei Shen, I mean, Sleeping Dogs. Yeah, but Wei Shen's universe. That's the whole, like, created from scratch. You know? Oh, yeah. As far as Batman, they should have so much more to go off mm. of, so much, you know, more ideas that they even have to think about, you know? Yeah. So, um, I hope it does one-up it. Oh, I mean, like, at least the combat system. Yeah, <coughs> yeah I mean, if this is going to be the final one, if it's going to be the final one, yeah. then I really hope, yeah, they, I hope they go all out. Yeah, yeah, I hope they do, too, especially if they're making it next-gen only, if, mm. they're, if they're playing to push it like that, because Assassin's Creed 4, you play it on, well, you're playing on the PS3, right? Yeah. You guys both experienced it. <laughs> how that game looks so good on the PS3 and the world is huge and there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Yeah. The PS4 version, mm-hmm. the graphics are definitely like better, mm-hmm. but like the game and stuff like that is actually not that much different. Yeah. They put like 
like a, like they tried to put like the whole game on the PS3. You know, they mm. basically did, and they scaled down like the least amount of stuff as possible. Yeah, so, yeah. Like for how big that game is, like that's like you know, Assassin's Creed Four is like Skyrim big, mm. except it's all ocean. But like if they put that on the PS3, and then they're making Arkham, you know, Arkham Knight, yeah. like. Next gen only. Like, hope they're going to utilize. Like, oh, definitely. As much as they can. Like Metal Gear Solid Four did. You know, when it first mm-hmm. launched on the PS3, like that game like looked, looked like the best game <laughs> on the PS3 until like recent date. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. I really hope it has good. like the Watch Dogs effect. Where the second you see it, we're like, this is yeah. next gen. You yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know. I have high hopes for Arkham Knight, and mm-hmm. I plan to play. It, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Well, first of all, just Kevin Conroy alone gives me. A lot of um, hope yeah, for yeah, the series, yeah, for sure. So I don't know. As long as they, as long as they change up things and make the fighting, the the fighting mechanics and, and all that, if they upgrade that, I think I'll be very pleased with it. Cool. So, speaking of, uh, you mentioned Metal Gear Solid Four. Well, the creator of Metal Gear Solid Four, Kojima, said he's Video worried Kojima. that the Phantom Pain Video. is too big. To finish. <laughs> so at first, when I read this, I thought that they meant. Well, obviously this is IGN, so obviously they like to link bait. So, I thought they meant that he was afraid that they weren't going to finish the game because it's too big. Mm. But it's actually he's just like, I don't think people are going to be able to finish this game because it's too big. Because like I just said, like where Metal Gear Four was like the best looking game, had like mm. a lot of you know, aside from it being a freaking thirty hour movie. <laughs> best movie ever. That's a man that I will believe when he says there's a lot of content in the game. <laughs> oh that, yeah. That man is a perfectionist, you know, the guy's mm. gotta have everything how it's gonna be. He's gonna put everything that he wants to put and he wants to be included in the game. Yeah. But is yeah. it really going to be more than you can finish? I, I don't think that's the thing. Because there's games like Star Ocean mm. and uh Tail the Tales series like Tales of Zelia and Siphonia and stuff yeah. like that. Julia. Um, <coughs> those games have a lot of hours to put into. Yeah. I don't know. Those are like the JRPGs. Uh, like, I don't know if you can get more content than than that. Like more content than you can play. You know. Yeah. I like in Tales of Zelia before I returned it to Gamefly. I clocked in like uh, close to fifty hours, mm-hmm. and I barely. I haven't even completed chapter two yet. <laughs> <laughs> like I am still yeah. on chapter two, and I felt like I've almost mm-hmm. beat the story. But yeah, there's like yeah. seven or eight chapters. I'm like seriously. <laughs> yeah. What else can be told here? Like, what is going on? <laughs> it's like a whole anime series. It's incredible. Yeah, Kojima, you know, like, like what he said about like metal, like um, about him being sad that GTA Five might be better uh, yeah. than this game. Yeah, Feels like he's worrying too much. <laughs> it really, I really think so. It's just really interesting because uh, he's worried <coughs> that people won't finish the story, and he's he quotes it as being. 200 times bigger than Ground Zero. So my estimate is, since Ground Zero is going to be completed in two hours and is 200 times bigger, <laughs> then that's going to be a lot of hours. That he's using cl- math. Yeah, yeah, by transitive property, that it'll yeah. be 400 hours. So I don't know. I really doubt it's going to be that long. And even if it is, it's just like you underestimate how diehard you know my yeah. other solid fans are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What I also wonder is how they say Ground Zero is going to be completed in two hours. Is it a 15-minute game with an hour and 45-minute uh, movie? Probably. Or, or is that two hours actually gameplay? I would not even be surprised. <laughs> you know? I wouldn't. If it was a movie with, that I can play uh, like for 10 minutes in the middle of it, I wouldn't It just ends up being like Heavy Rain. You can just kind of interact. That would be sick. <laughs> yeah. I love Heavy Rain. But, uh, yeah, so he cannot disclose the amount of missions in Phantom Pain, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we'll have lots of missions in there. You probably lost count. Yeah, one. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> we must have more escort missions. <coughs> no, snake. He says, um, pretty much the game. So basically, pretty much he expects a lot of people to replay. Okay, never mind. He's talking about Ground Zeroes. He expects people to replay the main game. So it's not about clearing the story. It's not about um, clearing the mission. It's about <clears throat> discovering new elements, new routes, and new ways to play. So I guess on that grounds, he's kind of. Ah, no pun intended. He's kind of defending Round Zero, so where it's like, yeah, you'll beat it really quickly, but there's more to discover. And then yeah. when you get Pan- Phantom Pain, you're going to be overwhelmed. Yeah. And you're going to be happy that I split this game up. Yeah. Sure. So It's going to be good. So I don't know. I'm excited regardless. Like, I love Metal Gear Solid. Even though 4 was a little disappointing. I'm yeah. Just, you know, mm-hmm. I'm still, I'm down, down with Kojima. Snake Four. Eaters. Yeah. Will forgive. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Snake Eater 1. We can leave two and four out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was watching uh, like a breakdown of the trailer for Metal Gear Solid Five, and it made me want to play Peace Walker for the first time. And <laughs> I never had anything against Peace Walker. I just don't really play any mobile games. I think that's the one with Stephen Blum. Oh, uh, okay. Spike. 
Oh yeah, he plays uh, one of the main characters. Spike yeah, Spiegel. he does. It's a Peace Walker. It's either Peace Walker. I forgot what the other mobile game was called. Yeah, well, there's also the Portable Ops, and there's Acid, but that's like a card game. Yeah. But basically, this guy goes into this whole in-depth breakdown that one of the characters in Five is a young Liquid Snake, mm-hmm. and his breakdown is so insane. So he gets it from like basically they show like a you know blonde kid looks kind of like Liquid, yeah, <laughs> and he has a necklace with like what looks like jackal teeth. Mm-hmm. And he go and then he harkens back to conversation from the first Metal Gear Solid, mm-hmm. where um, right when I think it was when you're about to fight him and he just kills um, Gray Fox. Spoilers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, and he's like, um, when I lived in um, the Middle East, we didn't hunt hunt foxes, we hunted jackals. <laughs> and it's just like, how did you even remember that? Like that was one of my favorite games. I don't remember that scene. It was just so funny. I was just like so impressed. It's just like wow. Like you've seen like because uh, you've seen like the um, the uh, the trailer for for MGS Five, you know, yeah. with the whole awesome song and stuff like mm-hmm. that. At the very end, where he shows like he's smoking a cigar and he oh, has that yeah. red metal arm. Oh yeah, yeah. So I think that's the same technology. I'm pretty sure it's either a throwback or the same technology to the Stephen Blum's character from Peace Walker. Yeah, I think he's in Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah, but yeah, he has a he has a metal red bi- like a <coughs> bionic arm for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> Spencer's gonna debut in there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But it looks exactly like it. It couldn't have just been a throwback. I think uh, I'm pretty sure he's the one that's in the uh, trailer. Yeah, Steve Blum. Because uh, I thought it was Liquid for the longest time, but. I know that Steve Blum's character looks. I keep forgetting. They just name. look just like. Him, yeah, though. yeah, he looks pretty. His name's much like, like Zero him. or something. So, or no, that's I can't a, remember. no Zero was his uh, his commander. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I can't remember, but there's so way. much story to Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear. That's why Snake's always confused. He doesn't even know what's going on. So no, Metal Gear. <laughs> Five games in, he still doesn't know what. He it doesn't is. know what a Metal Gear is. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> well, let me um tell me on my Kodiak. What's Metal Gear? <laughs> so what's this Kodiak? <laughs> like, like, a, bear. Like, a, like a bear. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> this story is just funny. So Gearbox is suing 3D Realms over an unsanctioned Duke Nukem game. So <coughs> where have I heard Gearbox? Sorry, where Gearbox I is uh, what's that game that that Agamemnon likes? Uh, Borderlands. Oh yeah. <coughs> and they also made the infamous Duke Nukem Forever. Ooh. So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so. It's kind of like gray whether or not they actually do still own the rights. That's not really what's important as far as I'm concerned. It's just like you guys made Duke Nukem Forever. You really want to remind the world that you made Duke Nukem Forever yeah. by suing Gar- by suing um, 3D Realms. It's like if they're gonna make a good one, you guys should just be like, all right, just give us a cut <laughs> and show people how a real Duke Nukem ma- game is made. Because I think of anything, you know, if anything, they know it to the fans yeah. to let someone make a better game. Because that game, after what ten plus years, and that's the garbage you release, yeah, yeah. and then you have the audacity to try and stop a good version of the game from coming out. <laughs> so I don't know. I saw that. And I was knows? just like. Yeah. I maybe lose a lot of respect for Gearbox, so I went from like a five and a half to like a, a one point two. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> so I don't know, that's all I had to say about that. But uh, so going uh, going on to the other games, other um, sophomore games being South Park, The Stick of Truth, and uh, basically Matt Stone comes out and said that censorship not a big deal. And so basically, if you're in Europe. Your copy of South Park: The Stick of Truth will be censored. Yeah. Luckily, we're in America. Yeah, I know but. they had um, <clears throat> they had response to the the censorship and stuff like that. Because mm. there's also a thing in Germany because there's Nazi flags in the game. Oh yeah. But they had to censor that there. Mm. But uh, they said the only thing like it's like okay, if you're gonna censor it, like whatever. They said the only thing that they were annoyed about is yeah. that everything that they put in the game, mm. aside from having to bleep out the cussing, yeah. would have been aired on TV. Yeah, like everything, oh, that, yeah, everything that they had true. in the game, they said um, all that content, all the stuff that they had in the game would have been aired on TV, mm. like no problem at all. Yeah, aside from just bleeping out the, the f words and mm. stuff. So uh, I think they said that that's, like, that's what I was reading from the article. That <clears throat> that was like one thing that they were annoyed about. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. Pretty much his statement was, uh, it's not, <coughs> it's not the big a deal. It doesn't change things that much. Mm-hmm. But we weren't going to change the game. Da- um, change the game downward somewhere and not just tell anybody. You know how ridiculous that is. Um, so he elaborated by saying, well, it does feel like a double standard a little bit. We weren't willing to change the content, but it doesn't ruin the game. It's like 40 seconds worth of the whole game. As long as we can make a joke out of the fact that they made us cut it, that was fine. <laughs> um, he says that, uh, <coughs> kind of to your point, um, Bobby, 
that inter interactiveness is uh, what makes the difference. In movies and television, you can do stuff that's morally gray very easily because you get to show the consequences. You get to show a reward. But in a video game, there's reasons why a zombie or a Nazi or an alien, um, these are pretty clear moral choices. Uh, it says there are things that make people uncomfortable in the interactive world, definitely. But that said, we had it in the game and could have shown a lot of that in the TV show pretty easily, especially now. So, And then uh, I know Agamemnon had brought up that a lot of people thought – that it was the European censor, I forgot what it's called, but uh, everyone thought that... Oh, the Peggy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Peggy Hill was the one that censored the game, but it turns out that it was uh, Ubisoft that were just, like, preemptively censoring it, and then it turns out they really... It didn't help them on their rating anyway, mm. so they kind of censored it for no reason, and they were just like, nah, we're just going to keep it censored. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just releasing the game as is. Yeah. So that they, was kinda... uh, release it with the uncensored... Well, the censored version. Yeah. Even so, though there was no point in doing that. <coughs> Yeah, it's like likened to, to Butters shooting somebody in the dick. Yeah, I don't think they actually censored the Nazi flags from the German release. Oh, yeah. I think it's the country if they want a distributor or something like that. Oh, uh, okay. They're just like, freaking get it. Like, like, yeah, you can't, like... I do get in Germany just because that's, like, a law. Like, in the whole state where it's, like, you can't display, like, any Nazi stuff. Mm -hmm. So, at least it's something that's consistent. It's not, like, arbitrary where it's like, no, no, this is okay, but this isn't okay. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, we don't ever want to go down that path again. We don't even want to see it. I didn't know, I didn't know that, yeah. was, that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they're very ashamed of that, uh, that Adolf. Yeah, yeah, I knew, yeah, I knew about that. I didn't know if it was, like, a... Okay, yeah, that's pretty... Yeah, I would assume they would... It has like been that. stricken from the records, my <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Nine, 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 nine. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so. Apparently the Germans probably weren't that happy about Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this censors... They censor all the Nazi flags on that. <laughs> they just put, like, smiley face flags. Hey, Dolph Nittler. <laughs> <laughs> he knits clothing. Nibbler. All right, so here's another topic that I thought was really interesting that I wanted to bring up. And so, two, um... <coughs> Ex developers from Ubisoft are they're making a game where they they're pretty much recreating the entire planet using drones to develop a survival action RPG and uh so they're using these uh, small civilian drones like an EB mini drone developed by Sensefly a partner I don't need to read all that garbage but anyway they're pretty much um recreating the entire planet um one scare kilometer at a time <laughs> and they're kind of saying like it's not really like a um I don't know. Like, it, <coughs> not the type of game that you would expect where you're out just trying to kill everybody else. Like, you're actually having to work together and survive everything. It seems like it's more interesting than just, like, flat-out fun, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, it says, uh, days are 24-hour um, with um, day and night cycles where time is set where the where your characters in the real world, real-life weather systems are connecting the game universe. It's um, freezing, snow, and um, real where your character is. There's one part in particular where they explain, like, the actual gameplay. But I can't find it here. But basically, it'd be like you start off with like a backpack, and you know, maybe have like a match and something to survive. So yeah. you have to spend your whole day like trying to find shelter and All then right. hooking up with somebody else. Where it's like, okay, well, I have food and you have water, and let's try and survive. Yeah. So then the fact that this is going to be like just like the real size of it, you know. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost overkill because it's like if you have so little technology that you can probably not even get out of your state, let alone <laughs> to another country, yeah. you know. So, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Okay, this is where, where they have it. So, it's like, unlike what you uh, might think, um, re-roll isn't um, planned as an MMO, and competitive multiplayer isn't even part of the plan yet. Instead, it's primarily a single-player affair with an option for co-op. So, I don't know. It sounds pretty interesting. It's definitely something I want to follow, just because it's, you know, you don't really see something like that every day. That's true. So, it kind of has tickled my fancy. But, yeah. I will end with a topic near and dear to my heart. <coughs> Keith or Sutherland will be involved in a Mortal Kombat game. Oh. So, not a huge fan of Mortal Kombat, no. but I am a huge fan of Jack Bauer. I am a huge fan of Jack Bauer as well. Yeah. So I'm hoping... This is my hope. Because they haven't said what he's going to actually do in the game. But he just had made like kind of an off statement when people were talking about you know his involvement in the Phantom Pain. He said, I did Mortal Kombat, and it's such a huge game, but it's not like uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. But I hope, because, okay, so you know how they have Scorpion in um, Justice League mm -hmm. and Injustice. I hope that they have Jack Bauer in Mortal Kombat. Special Agent Jack yeah. Baraka. <laughs> Jack Baraka. <laughs> Baraka. He's got silenced blades. 
I don't know. <laughs> it actually makes sense they made him like Jax. He just has, like middle arms. It's like he can, like like the his story is like a nuke like blows up the rest of his body and they have to make him cybernetic. <laughs> <laughs> He's got like a, a built in USP ninety <laughs> like cut in his head. It's like the nuke blasted him into Outworld and there's like a terrorist attack on Outworld. It's like shit. It's like Goro's like holding um right ra- 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 um like ca- hostage. It's like you know the policy of Outworld is we do not negotiate with terrorists. And, <laughs> and then it starts with like you know how they have the Mortal Kombat like yeah. um totem pole. Where you go up and you have to fight every character, and he's just like going one by one, making sure that Scorpion and Sub Zero tell him what he wants to know. <laughs> so he's just killing everybody one by one to his, get to the top. His fatality team. should be Tony Almeida coming out and just helping him cap these fools. <laughs> Tony. I need backup. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. He should have, like, multiple fatalities. It's just like you're you're getting the best of him, and then he just, like, snaps your arm and just, like, shoots you or something. Or, like, CTU's strike team just busts through the door and <laughs> kills everybody. Oh, good. I don't know. But I, w- I want to say one last thing. So, as far as, uh, there's a game that came out recently. I'll just say it real quick. It's yeah. a game called Thief. Oh, yeah. Um, I just want to mention this game because it's by a studio that I... Uh, Love very dearly. It's uh, Eidos Montreal. Ah, nice. The men who made lovely people who made Do Sex, uh-huh. Human Revolution. Probably freaking love game, by the way. Those people. Yeah. So, um, freaking Thief came out and it's like, I saw the logo. You know, Eidos Montreal. Uh-huh. I get it. You know, get the game going and it's freaking. It's amazing. Nice. Everybody's just like, oh, the PS3 it looks so shitty. It sucks <laughs> and stuff like that. And I'm sure because there's some like little frame rate issues here and there. Mm. And I know the graphics aren't nearly what they are on the PS4. Yeah. But the game is is fun. Nice. It gets, it's it's all stealth. <laughs> and I said you that Facebook message. It's also, you can loot everything. Oh yeah like, yeah. The, the name Sold. of the game is loot. <laughs> like you literally you loot everybody. You pickpocket everybody. You you know you you get different tools to loot even more. Nice. Like I just bought um, a razor knife, uh-huh. so now for any paintings and stuff, I can cut up in the painting <laughs> and see if there's a seam that I can cut. Uh, Once I find like a seam or something, the controller vibrates like yeah. a, like when you found oh, it. Nice. Then you just like cut a thing in there, and then like you just go to a save. You know you like it's just really really cool. Nice. Like people are saying that there's um people who say it sucks, um because I think I know why because um it's not like um. Like a like a big story or anything mm-hmm. like that. It's literally like, it's all stealth, you know. Oh, okay. Like you can you can play it like the way you want it, but well, when I say all stealth, you can play it however you want it. As long mm-hmm. as you get through, then you get through. Yeah. You just use all your tools, <laughs> get through wherever you want. Like do sex, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it's really hard to go like just in there because you don't really have weapons except for like your your thief stuff. You have like a little you know, billy club type mm-hmm. thing. You just knock him out in the back of the head. Yeah. But anyways, it's more like they give you a bunch of level. It's a cool story too. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a pretty cool story. Um, I haven't beaten it yet, but uh, it's basically every level, it feels like just another challenge. Oh, I see. So basically, you can even go to the uh, custom, you can even make your own custom challenge of a certain mm. map. Oh, and so okay. basically, making your own rules to make it as difficult as you want it to be. Yeah. So that's basically what the game is. It's like, I think people are expecting like a huge like blockbuster type game, mm. which it's got a story and stuff like that, and it's really fun. Mm. Everything is good about it, but it's more like in stages, you know? Like, yeah. you do this stage, now get through this however you want it, you know? Oh, I see. So it's basically different scenarios mm. all compiled into, like, a big story. Ah. So it's not like, you know, open world and all that stuff, even though you can, like, go around the city, but it's mm. ver- it's very pretty much linear. Like, you go where it wants you to go, mm. but once you get there, you're in this big area, you know, just you're in a different stage, basically. Mm. And so you just get there, you know, through the whole thing however you want to. That's what every, every level is, you know? It's just yeah. another challenge. And it's really cool. It's uh, it's really smart, and it's um, you know, it's really it's really easy to get used to. Just like how you feel at home is immediately when you play do sex, like oh, everything yeah, that yeah. you want it to do. Mm-hmm. Like they have that, like where you like around the corner, then you just like by habit you just like hold left around the corner. Yeah. So when you do that, then he actually peeks around mm-hmm. the corner. You're just like, man, they thought of everything, you know? Yeah. And that's what I feel about Thief as well. He's just like you feel their creativity go mm-hmm. into it. It's just really cool. <coughs> I highly recommend it if you just want like a game that you can just like. I feel like doing like a you know a mission or something like yeah. that right now. You can just load up the game, do a mission, save it, and leave. You nice. know, upgrade your weapons, get different tools. You like you get like a a wrench so you can access different places. Mm. You know, like go through like vents and stuff like that, or get nice. some wire cutters so you can take a shortcut somewhere else. Mm. Get the cutting knife, like I said, you can open paintings. Get your skills up to uh, pick locks faster, and oh, then like nice. you know open lo- you know open um like safes faster. Mm. And then, like, you know, your overall detection skills and stuff like that, where you're, like, hitting on a wall, trying yeah. to find, like, a false panel. Oh, you're, like, look, yeah. Because everywhere you move, mm-hmm. uh, he does the hand motions. So you oh, can always okay. hear... I, I love that in games for some uh, reason, where you can see all of your hand motions. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But um, other than that, yeah, it's just, I think it's really well made. <coughs> I had to mention it because I love them. <laughs> I just imagine him doing like the Honda hand slap while he's moving. He's pretty much like when you go like <laughs> yeah. straight up to a wall, he's like that. Nice. He's just like, <laughs> just like filling it up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Are they gonna have a Ocean's Eleven DLC so you can uh, rob a bank? Uh it, it's funny <laughs> that you said that and uh, you nailed it right on the head. Oh yeah. If you pre-ordered it, mm. you got a bank heist mission uh, for free. Nice. I haven't played it yet because I want to beat the story. Uh-huh. The story's pretty cool so far. I've only gotten like a uh, like like. Four missions in, yeah, and it's uh, it's really difficult off the bat. And I'm playing on normal. Ah, I'm okay. pretty good at stealth, mm. um, but I get pretty impatient sometimes. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, I just want to go knock this guy out because you can't because you can go like you have a focus mode, mm. and so if you go focus mode, you can just like target somebody like in the kidney or like in the like in the head or something. It's yeah. just like an instant knockout. Ah, uh, okay. But other than that, um, yeah, I'm getting I'm looking forward to that bank heist one. <laughs> I think you I, you completely nailed it on the head. Got the George Clooney skin. You can <laughs> Dude, that'd be so sick. <laughs> Your default skin is pretty badass. Nice. But I feel. Uh, I figure if you say that it's difficult, I have no chance. Because you should see my. You should see my attempt at stealth in Assassin's yeah. Creed. You just kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it, it, it's a, it's a good stealth system. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Uh, I would trust the uh, Eidos Montreal guys. But uh, it's really cool. I. I'm still getting used to the, to the stealth mechanics, mm. so I'm in certain parts. I'm being way more careful than I need to be. Uh, so it's not that I'm being impatient, but mm. I think I'm overestimating a lot of the parts. Gotcha. Because well. they make because they they make it pretty um, <laughs> they make it difficult to it you know to a certain mm. standard. Like it's not difficult to where <coughs> you know it's just a random like oh we're just gonna make them you know detect you easy or something like that. Yeah. It's more like. You're going, you see them, you spot them, uh-huh. and then you like you start opening a drawer, and then like a guy that you didn't see mm. like just comes around the corner, just like, what the hell are you doing uh-huh. here? So they make it like that. They have them strategically placed in certain positions, gotcha. not to be cheap, because mm. they have rotations and stuff, yeah. but they're also unpredictable, because mm. they're not just going like back, mm. forth, back, forth, back, you know? Yeah. So it's 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 like a, it's, it's a creative difficulty. Gotcha. It's, it's not just like... Oh, you made a sound, and they hear you from farther <laughs> away now. Like somehow, like their hearing gets enhanced. Like, and it's like it's like realistically like harder. Like uh, they're a little bit tougher, you know, to take down and stuff. And they'll they'll chase after you for uh, longer. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice. Well, I might give it a shot. Uh, I might sharpen my uh, my stealth skills <laughs> a little bit. I would definitely turn the volume way up for this game. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. You get water arrows. It's the first time I've seen water arrows huh. in a stealth game. It's pretty sick. How does that work? Because uh, uh, the the time period that you're at is like um like old London, oh, like okay. where everything's you know made of stone and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and um you know wood fires, and so like um you know like the where you put on the wall, uh-huh. you know you have like a little the little triangle type thing where you put the wood in. You have yeah. like it's like a torch, like lights across oh, the wall yeah, like yeah. that. So anywhere there's light and stuff, that's basically you're shooting out the shooting at the light bulbs like in Splinter Cell. <laughs> so you have like a water arrow, you shoot out the fire. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's pretty you. cool. Nice. There's some uh, out-of-this-world gadgets that you can <laughs> use, and they're pretty cool, because like, they're like gadgets that aren't from that time period. Yeah. It's like, you have like a, like, a, like, a, like a pretty modern bow mm. for being back in that day. So it's not like just in that time period. Mm. It's, it's its own thing. Gotcha. It's really cool. So since they're in England, that means Jack Bauer can be there since the new season of 24 is going to be there. I mean, if he's living in your clock tower, yeah, that would be... <laughs> he's just like, Jack Bauer's in my clock tower. And he ain't got no time for your Cockney accent. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> well, with that, <laughs> this is Prometheus. This is Bobby Beetle. This is Agamemnon. <laughs> this is Vin. <laughs> I was about to say straight out of Austin. <laughs> Big Tom Austin. <laughs> Save! File <laughs> corrupted. Ah! 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 That was just terrible. That was terrible. It was terrible. Charles Barkley DLC. <laughs> <laughs> the ice uh, the ice goes on first, and then comes the hate. Then comes the shack attack.
Hi, this is Jeff from the 12A Podcast. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this show, please make sure to check out more on foredradio.com.